matters in an MVP? What matters in an MVP is three things. Well, yeah, three things. You gotta have the narrative. You gotta have season success with your team. And you gotta, and you gotta have the stats for it. You can't be like on a great team and you know you, you have all the narrative in the world. Like, like take for example, James Conner. They make the playoffs. Great narrative on a great team. But in the season stats aren't really there, and also the values of the team, of course. And then also the fourth one, which I didn't really want to mention, which is more of just memorability throughout the season, like Patrick Mahomes for this past season, making incredible throws, the no-look throws, stuff like that. Memorability throughout the season. So let me start off. These are five quarterbacks that I believe fulfill those. Playoff success has a narrative. Uh, not playoff success, uh, season success is what it is a narrative, and can get the stats for it. So these are five quarterbacks. I got Patrick Mahomes, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Andrew Luck, and Philip Rivers. Now, all these players I know have the ability of getting 11 or more wins this upcoming season. They are able to get the stats, and they have the narrative behind each one of them. Each one of them has a narrative. And some better than others, some stronger than others, some weaker than others. Some able to reach farther audiences, younger audiences, older audiences, but they all have an area of some sort. But let's start off with Patrick Mahomes. Now, I believe that Patrick Mahomes, even, even though he's in the conversation for MVP, I don't believe that he's going to win it. I just don't. The last player to win MVP back-to-back -back years was Peyton Manning. And I believe 2008 and 2009, as my notes tell me. And he actually did it twice. He did in 2008 2009. And also 2003 and 2004, I believe in 2003, he actually shared the MVP. So we can maybe say he won back, to back MVP twice. It's actually crazy because not many. I think he's the only player to do it, actually. And But I, I, I believe that the likelihood of him winning MVP back-to-back -back years is not that high. Uh, especially coming off his second year, incredible. Expectations super high, 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns. Not that many interceptions. Expectations are all the way up here, but then he's got to reach close to that if he wants to win MVP again. And but but I believe that he shares a lot of similarities to Dan Marino and will have a Dan Marino like third year. Dan Marino also won MVP second second season in the NFL. He put up similar numbers to to uh, Patrick Mahomes over five thousand yards. 48 touchdowns, almost 50 touchdowns, just like Patrick Mahomes. Lit up the league, had one of the best offenses in the league. Uh, first round buying the playoffs, great talent. He won his MVP in the second year, like I said before. Dominant offense, and he carried them throughout the playoffs. The defense was kind of eh, just like Patrick Mahomes. Uh, they went 14 and 2 in the regular season. The Chiefs went 12 and 4. They had a home field advantage, like I said. But in the playoffs, they, they, they still continued it. They beat Seattle 31 to 10, beat the Steelers 45 to 28, I believe. Again, offensive force. But then they went against Joe Montana and the 49ers and lost 16-30 in the only Super Bowl that Dan Marino ever went to. And third year, he, you know, they, it, he kind of fell off. He wasn't that same MVP caliber player. He still had a great season. No doubt about that. He still had a great season. He had 4,137 yards, 30 touchdowns, 21 interceptions. He was just not an MVP. Those are just not MVP numbers, especially in, in the modern NFL. And I think that same thing's going to happen for Patrick Mahomes. He went to the playoffs this year, beat the Colts 3 with 13 very high-scoring game, but then went against this, gener this generation's Joe Montana, the GOAT of both eras, in Tom Brady, and lost. Of course, it wasn't as a blowout uh, as Dan Marino's loss to the 49ers, 16-38. It was against the Patriots, and they lost 37-31. to not, not really the same blowout kind of style, and I believe that, unlike Dan Marino, Patrick Mahomes will probably win the Super Bowl. But I don't think he'll win the second MVP. I just don't think he will. Now, next on the list, I have Tom Brady. Now, for Tom Brady, the numbers are there. Statistically, he's probably around there every single year. He has some of the narrative going into his, like, whatever, like, I don't know how, I don't know how many seasons he's played, but it was, like, a hundredth season and possibly winning MVP. Probably will be the oldest player ever to win MVP, but I just think that this season, especially with him aging and having 
great running backs are you there, like Sonny Michel, I think that the Patriots are going to shift more of him being a offensive leader more than, than more of a playmaker like Patrick Mahomes. So he'll also have the stats there, but they just won't be high up there just like Patrick Mahomes or Drew Brees or Philip Rivers or Andrew Luck. So he'll, so he'll definitely be in the conversation. They'll, they'll play great, but he won't have that significance all the way up there or have those flashy plays all the time. Same with Drew Brees. He started off strong last season. First 10 games, he had almost 2,000 yards. He had 25 touchdowns, had one interception, and, to, and uh, had a passing completion percentage of 77%. Those are crazy numbers. And he was in the talk for MVP alongside Patrick Mahomes. And you could probably argue that he should have won over Patrick Mahomes. But the reason why he didn't was because he fell off in those last six games. Well, last five, because the sixth game he didn't play in. Because for a rest reason, so for the playoffs. But those last five games that he played, he completely fell off. And most notably against the Dallas Cowboys, where he threw an interception that just went right down to the dirt, nowhere close to the player, and it was just bad. It was just bad. But those last five games, he threw, barely threw over a thousand yards, seven touchdowns, and four interceptions, completion percentage dip from 77% all the way down to 69%. Which is not great. And if you do proportions and proportion it out to a whole season, that's really 3,290 yards, 22 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions, which is more of an average, a bit above average, really, QB. Not really great, but kind of still there. Um, and again, like I believe just like Tom Brady, he'll, he'll be saving himself for the playoffs when it really matters most because... He's just that good, and because he wants to preserve, he wants to preserve himself, and he sees just like Tom Brady sees that you know he's had to preserve himself. He's getting up there in age, and he's part of the forty. I believe he's forty years old now, uh, forty year old club, or he's close to it. Um, and he's having, and he's starting to show signs, unlike Tom Brady, in more severe stretches of dropping off. Now, now he still has the talent around him to still win, which is great for him. But these are the two players that I believe have a stronger case. For MVP. So these two players. One, Andrew Luck. Two, Philip Rivers. Alright, so first with Andrew Luck. Back from injury. He had some concerns going in. After, you know, having that, what was it, like a torn shoulder, yeah, torn shoulder labrum. And coming back from it, he was out for multiple years from the NFL, going into his first week against, I believe, the Bengals. And they start off the season, the first six games, one in five. And there's a lot of questions is, if the shoulder was still bothering him, he still was, you know, perform performing pretty well. But, you know, there were some throws that, you know, you could tell, that, ah, is he still injured? And just when they were playing, losing a whole bunch, it was a bit cheeky and all that stuff. But overall, they still made the playoff. So you have the story right there from last season. And he, he was uh, a really dark horse, uh, almost winner last season, uh, going into the MVP race. But last season accumulated 4,593 yards. 39, close to 40 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. I believe that going into this next year, he'll do a lot better than that. More yardage, better placing percentage, uh, more touchdowns, less interceptions. Because now he's away from that shoulder injury. And he actually got a lot of help from his rookies. Darius Leonard on the defensive side did a lot better. He had Quinton Nelson coming in as, I believe, a guard. A rookie guard at that into the NFL and performed really, really well. You saw that after they started getting there, after the O-line started beefing up and actually protecting um, Andrew Luck, he actually completed a lot more of his passes, had less interceptions, less uh, incomplete passes. And I, I, I believe that he himself has that narrative of kind of that quiet guy, kind of like a Kawhi Leonard almost, um, but that's always able to get it done. Always able to get it done. He was a great leader. Has a very bright personality, and I believe that they'll be able to win still eleven ish games. Um, I mean, he'll he'll get the stats right. My only concern with him is injury, injury. Because going back to twenty fifteen, he had the torn shoulder labrum, um, and then he also had the great abdomen muscle tear. Two uh, thousand sixteen, he had a great one concussion. So he's always had these. Injuries and that 2015 shoulder uh, labrum tear, it, it affected him for the past couple of seasons, and he only recovered it. We only recovered from it this past season. 
which is why they got off to that one and five start, or one of the reasons why one of the reasons why they got off to that one and five start. And without that, and with that problem out of the way, I believe that they'll do a lot better. A lot better. They got off to a nicer start. They're not going to start off one and five, and he's going to have the stats for that. T.Y. Hilton's going to be there. He's going to be amazing. All that stuff. Now you may call me biased for this because I am a Chargers fan, obviously, but. I got Philip. I got Philip Rivers right there with Andrew Luck as my two uh, MVP favorites. I would say for him, I haven't really seen a dip in the stats like like um like a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees. He's not coming off like that second year where you have a lot more film on him, like Pat, like Patrick Mahomes. He doesn't have that injury concern because he's really been injured aside from the torn ACL. Uh, like Andrew Lowe. So he has all that for him. And he's able to get stats. His team is going to play super well alongside him. They're going to win more than 11 games for sure. Probably 12, 13 games. Um, and he has that narrative. Uh, as a quarterback that's never won MVP, first of all. And hasn't been to a Super Bowl or won a Super Bowl. And finally, actually being more in the spotlight, I guess. And having a lot more attention. And again, he had an incredible, incredibly consistent year, unlike uh, Tom Brady and Drew Brees, where he didn't really have a fall off. Uh, he had a few muck ups, but those are more overall wins. Where he's got to beat Denver, they lost twenty three twenty two, and they got to beat Baltimore, where they lost twenty two ten against a rookie quarterback and Lamar Jackson. Now, my only concern with Philip Rivers is when the spotlight is on him, when it matters the most. When the media starts paying attention to him, like they did after they beat Kansas City. After they beat Kansas City, I covered it. I was like, you know, you gotta pay attention to this team. But then in the next game, they play against Baltimore. And when all the media's on them, like saying, you know what? Maybe they can actually win. Maybe they're a dark horse favorite for, for, for the Super Bowl. Maybe they should actually be looked at. Guess what? They lost against Baltimore, and it was shameful. Yes, Baltimore had one of the best defenses in the league, but you still cannot go out 22 to 10 against a rookie quarterback. I don't care. You can't do that. And like I said, those muck-ups, you can't have that if you want to be in the MVP conversation. So I believe that he will be able to win the MVP if he doesn't have those muck-ups because his stats are incredible. Not like Patrick Mahomes game from touchdowns, but, you know, pretty good. 4,308 yards, 32 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 68% completion percentage. He he has, he has all the tools. He has all the tools. And if he wins the Division 2 this year, might as well just give it to him. But you cannot have any slip-ups. You can probably have one game like that. Denver won. It's probably fine. But you can't lose twice like that. You cannot have two muck-ups. Two muck-ups is not good. I, I can't do that. So I believe he has all the tools in place, and I believe that him and Andrew Luck are actually up there for my MVP favorites. Th those are my, my MVP favorites, and if I had to choose between either, I would choose Andrew Luck, actually. I Mainly just because as, as a Chargers fan, I don't want to see Philip Rivers win the MVP, because that means that they probably won't win the Super Bowl, because statistically speaking, no MVP has won the Super Bowl in the same year. So, that's just me. But I would love to see Phil Rivers win an MVP, but I just think that Andrew Wood probably has a bit more at his disposal and has a bit more of a narrative.